everyone. Thanks for joining me here at Power Mods. We're actually working in the retail space today. The back is completely full of sleds and bikes, and that's a real mess. But you know what? This is a really easy job. We can do this right in here. You can do this in your living room, in your kitchen, on the kitchen table. Wife would have no problem with it. Extremely clean job. Trust me. So we've got these alternative impact A-arms. These are 36-inch uh, stance A-arms, true clearance A-arms, which is pretty cool because you can see how they're sort of, they're, you know, not bent. What would you call that, Kai? Okay, what would you call that? Bent. Yeah, they're bent. They're bent. It gives you a little more clearance underneath the sled. And on this 16, this is a 16 axis, uh, it gives us the 19 geometry, which is pretty cool. You know, I've been using these alternative impact A-arms for a lot of years. Uh, I've tried a lot of different products from a lot of different companies, and I'm always coming back to these. Uh, you know, it's kind of the thing I feel is the right thing to do is to try everything so we can give you an honest opinion on it. And, you know, I've got, just for example, we're going to show you why I like these arms the best. Here. So this is the kit that I was running on this sled, 36-inch stance as well. Um, I'm ditching it. There are a couple issues. Uh, number one, it's very hard to get these ball joints, these upper joints and these lower joints, especially in the middle of the season when everybody's blowing these things off or if it's a low snow season here in Canada or in the States and people are you know, having a lot of impacts. These crack and you, you know, earlier on in, with the Polaris sleds, you'd have to buy a whole arm with this ball joint just to get the ball joint. But we're having problems getting these ball joints. We're down for two and three weeks in the winter and when the winters are kind of like they have been in the last little while, we don't have time to mess around. The other problem is, is that when you nail something, you end up bending the arm. And you're not, uh, you know, you're, there's really no sacrificial point on here. So if you bend your arm, you're out of the game as well. Now the good thing about the alternative impact A-arms, I'm going to say that a large percentage of the times that you actually break or bend an A-arm or you know, front suspension component is because you've hit the ski or the ski with the carbide into a solid object. The odd time, yes, you know, you will have a, you know, a strike on the front of the arm. That may cause a, a bend, but it's that uh, the outer maybe leverage of that ski when you're tagging something, um, it's, going to, it's going to bend the back side of the arm it's going to pull it in or it's going to bust up the front, uh, the upper arm. But nine times out of ten, if you strike something from the front on the ski, it will bend the back side of this arm. But with these alternative impact arms, these heim joints go, which is really cool. If these go, then you just replace them right out in the snow. And I'll show you how. I've done it. I've got videos on it because I've done it out in the snow. Broken arms created a lot of issues for me, but not when using these babies. See, there's a little slot just uh, that we cut in the back of this. Dan might be actually sending them all out like this. Actually, no, he did send this one and this was slotted in the back. So if this snaps off, you just go in through the back of the arm with a small screwdriver and just spin it out. Out it comes. It's um, a really simple way. Like I said, a high percentage, I'm going to say probably 90, I don't know if it's 90% or, you know, depending on where you're riding. Most of the time, it's tagging a ski, bending that A-arm. One thing that I've noticed as well is if, you know, I'm hitting something real hard, we ride a lot of rocky terrain and stumps on uh, power lines, for example. If you tag something hard enough, sometimes this will just sort of bend. So it's giving you a bit of an indication that something's going down and uh, it's time to replace this. If you get lucky, that's what happens. Now, we carry extras in our bag. Um, it's really the only way to do it. Now, there are other options out there, of course. I mean, we sell everything here, um, but I prefer, I mean, that's why I run alternative impact on everything. You know, we, we sell arms like this. This is the other option you can get. And you can see, yeah, they're using uh, time joints. It's kind of counterintuitive. If you're using a joint that's going to break and it's a replaceable joint, then how are you supposed to get it out of here? Get out of there. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Good God. Holy moly. So you bust that, that stud off in there. How are you supposed to get it out of there? It doesn't make any sense. You know, um, 
to, to me, it's a, it doesn't matter what it's made out of at that point. If you can't fix it on the trail, then it's a you know, pretty major inconvenience. And you're going to have to go and uh, buy something else, get another A-arm. And I've been down that road. These A-arms here, I've broken these in the middle of the winter, and I've been out a month. I can't even get a return phone call. Well, that's why we don't sell these. But I can't even get a return phone call uh, from the company. And my buddy, uh, Keely, actually, he did the same thing. And we were both at, you know, no good. Um, these here, wow, those are heavy. Wow, that, that's like, that's like three or four pounds heavier than this. this these are chrome molly. We get these in, in titanium as well. But uh, yeah, those are really heavy. This just doesn't make any sense to me. So we're going to install these on the RMK here, uh, the access chassis. We've already done it on this side. You can take a look at it. Very easy install. Just takes a few minutes. Kit comes with everything you're going to need, upper lower arms, um, the little uh, alignment bushings, and these the shorter steering rods or tie rods or radius rods or whatever it is you want to call them. You, you need shorter if you're going with the shorter stance. If you're going um, with just the regular stance, a 39 inch for, uh, for example, you're not going to need these. But it's always handy to have spares. Sometimes you just never know what you're going to get into. Um, you know, if you whack a ski pretty hard, we've bent just the arms before, or just the uh, radius rods. It happens. So these are all available as well. So let's install that. Okay, I think we can get this done in short order. First thing you're going to do is you're going to wind this joint in all the way with the nut on the outside. Because this is what you're going to use to sort of tighten this up with. Just going to tighten that, arm, that nut up. And one thing I've noticed about this, um, when I've snapped this bottom one right off, the heim joint, um, this will just sort of, you know, rotate loose in here. It'll just sort of, the ski will come up and it'll move around. It doesn't break anything on here, but it's pretty darn handy because uh, once you put everything back together, you just bring it down and tighten up that jam nut. That's good to go. On the bottom one, you screw that in and you leave about five threads on the outside here. And that's going to set it up for more or less stock geometry. When you, if you're using your stock springs, sometimes um, uh, you have a little bit of issues with the clearance, but you just make an adjustment on your heims and you're good to go. So let's get these off. Now you just prop your slide up. We just, luckily we had this uh, little length of a uh, two by four for whatever reason. And we just sort of popped it up off the ground a little bit. I usually like to take off these radius rod arms first. Just because it's a moving part and uh, just works a little easier that way. Well, even in here with this pretty darn clean floor, I still managed to lose nuts and bolts. So I just screw it back on there. So it's all in one piece. I pop the spindle off first. Otherwise, you're working with the arms on a loose spindle off the sled and it's nah, just not as easy. You know, I've, uh, you got to press these in and out too. Like we've busted just these joints on here. We've busted just these joints on here and you have to press them out and you can't do it. Like, you know, we drive seven, eight hours, sometimes 14 hours to Gas Bay, Quebec to go riding. And uh, when one little $20 ball joint blows your trip after the first day of riding, it's pretty maddening. All your friends are out there having fun. When you're sitting in the camp, Crying in your cup, if you know what I'm saying. The joints are on their way to being hosed. This is loose already. I think I've, this is the third joint I've put in in two seasons. Not liking it. easier changing these arms than the old school ones, man. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Okay. It is bent. Good time to take a look at your boots down here. This is sort of coming off a little bit. And I, uh, I go through and I hit this with our TV, seal them right up, because this sled last season was just filling full of power. It's crazy. 
Best pile season for us ever. Backside of this way, bar link is actually a uh, 11 mil. One thing I also found with those is that uh, maybe the positioning of these weren't exactly bang on, and the sway bar links I busted them. I busted two of these, not last season, but the season before. I broke well, we had a tough season about three years ago two or three years ago I went through uh, a bunch of these it wasn't always the arms fault I mean I did I did hit a lot of hard things but the inability to to just change out the part there and then wait for a few weeks to get new parts not so not so bueno all right now what you need to do is you get yourself a little pair of these circ clip tools and you pull these out this is, I just keep my finger over it so nothing goes flying across the room. You should be wearing safety glasses. I know I'm not. I'm a bit of a bad influence, maybe. So we've got these installed. Um, you know, we don't have to install the shorter uh, radius rods on it because we already have them on, so there's it'd be just a waste of time to do it. But if you need to do it, this is easy. You just pop out the two uh, Torx bolts, the two little Christmas trees or three Christmas trees, and you can see it right here. Here, Kai. That can. It's uh, just, it's really easy to get in there. We broke that uh, pivot arm up there this winter. I'll put that back in. Oopsie. I'll put that back in. And uh, so we had to take everything out. But it's, it's, you know, while you've got this all apart, you can easily get in there. And uh, I'll come in later on and re seal that all up. You don't want to really put this bolt in. Well, you can't really put it in until, uh, until you get that in a place because of the angle. Is that bent? Just a wee bit. It's, it's just a little tight, so I'm just tweaking that out just a wee bit there so that it goes in. I want it does. Some of this stuff is way easier to do when you're in here, like with that spindle off, right? So now's the time. 15. Put it in the, um, if you put it in the sway bar link first, you can sort of tweak this to where you need to. It's just much easier to install that on there. I find anyway. Fifteens here, cause uh, she's a little tight, a little tight in there. One of the best improvements that can be made to your sled. You know, this a uh, little bit of a expense, and then a little bit of time working on it saves you in the field, man. You guys know what I'm talking about. The ones that have had to do this. Been all wrenches too so if you're in the field and you really do need to get into something you know uh, you're not going to need allen keys to, to get to do what you got to do and we sell all these extra parts and pieces too you know i carry one i carry an upper and a lower with me when i'm on the sled and then i carry a couple extras in the truck and nine times out of ten when you seem to have those extras you don't need them it's pretty darn good didn't break one last year I don't think. Oh, yeah. Bam. How's that? Now we 
just have to tighten up that one bolt and this this uh, sway sway bar link. That's it. Okay. How long do you think before I break one? I don't know. Depends on how badly you want to put yourself out of the season. <laughs> but at the least we'll no, care. I think, I, think it'll, I think it'll be awesome. Just time joints and that's it. Well, yeah. Carry some in the machine. Yep. I mean, so they're all going to have Heim joints from now on, like all our sleds, so that we've got a brand new Chaos that we just have to go pick up at the dealership. It's getting the, ti the uh, Alternative Impact Titanium kit on it. And then... Uh, Are they true clearance as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yuck. Oh, yeah. You bet. So everything's going to be good to go. So actually, now only you have to carry spare joints. I don't have to carry on my sled carry all that extra weight. <laughs> That's fine. I'd rather carry that than step of eight or anything. Yeah, really. There we go. Oh, look at that. Dan picked out the perfect color. Yeah, check my head. You just want to make sure you turn when you turn that you're not binding up anywhere on here. Nice. You can make you can make a few other adjustments as well with those uh, with your heim joints, but if you um, go out on the bottom, you also need to go out on the top. But on this machine, we're not going to have to do anything. I'm just gonna tighten up these jam nuts now. And we sell all these parts right here at Power Mods, Canada, United States. We sell all your other snowmobile parts that you're gonna need for your sled. If you guys enjoy our videos and you wanna keep supporting us so we can keep making them, just uh, you know, give us a call, PM us, DM us, uh, check us out on social media. We are easily available. We don't have everything on our website because there's about a billion products uh, the catalogs are insane. They're like a thousand pages each and there's a billion things on it's without a word of exaggeration, a billion. Uh, so just hit us up and we'll definitely get back to you, but we're going to have to check out the alignment on this. Stay tuned. That's another video coming up and you know what? We're just about at riding season. Yeah, it's going to be good. What a great looking sled, right? 2016. Never winter ridden. Okay. Little old lady. Me. That's it. We're going to use these panels. We're going to make carbon fiber molds. Or we're going to make carbon fiber panels. That sound pretty cool? Super lightweight. Lose some weight here. But kind of keep it, like, you know, so it actually looks good. Not with one of those hoods that kind of look kind of redonkulous, you know. Uh, I still like the look of that. So we're going we're gonna to do that. But we're going to use that on our other slide. Well, maybe we'll make some panels for this as well. We've been pretty hard on them. You know, some of these things are starting to let go a little bit cracked here and there. That's awesome. And then there's a the rev. Yeah. Well, we should do a shop update. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Check out the shop update.